Would you like to earn $120 for a single short video? Because that's how much Danco pays for it. Almost everyone who makes such videos uses After Effects, but in this video, I will show you how to make videos of similar quality for completely free. This video is part of my new course, which you will find on school.com. My goal with this is not to make a flashy video, but to give as much value as simply as possible. If you have an idea how I could make these videos even better, please write it in the comments. Let's get started. Creating a light effect with shapes. Open up CapCut and import the black and white backgrounds from the images folder. Then, drag the black background onto the main layer. And wait a few hours for it to load. If it's done loading in, drag the white background onto a new layer above it. After this, go to the mask tab and select the star or the heart shape. First, we will look at a heart shape from the mask options. Let's rotate it 180 degrees, then increase its size so that it almost fills the entire width of the screen and position it so that the top of the heart is visible at the top. If we are done with the positioning, we can give it a little transition with the feather property. Drag it a little lower, depending on how much you want the light to spread. You can increase or decrease the power of the feather value, but I like it best between 7 and 10, so it is not as strong, but still visible while scaled down. After that, let's make a compound clip out of it. Once done, select the horizontal option on the mask tab. Let's change the feather value to a higher value, somewhere between 50 and 80, to get a nice transition. Then, drag the feather position down, so that the transition fills the entire screen. After that, go back to the basic tab, find the blend property, and change the opacity value to roughly 80%. If you are not satisfied with the result, feel free to change the images or even the feather and position values. Since in most cases, you will use these lights scaled down, it is worth using larger transition values so that they are clearly visible even at smaller sizes. Just to make the result more visible, I'll import Danco's image and place it between the black and white layers. I resize it a bit. Correct its position, change the blend mode to screen, and here is the final result, with light and without the light layer. The other possible shape we can use is the star shape. Delete the previous layer of white light and replace it with a new unedited white layer. Let's go to the mask tab again and select the star shape. Increase its size so that one branch of the star covers the height of the entire screen. Unfortunately, there is a cap cut bug here because no matter how hard I try, it does not allow me to place a star lower than this position using only the mouse. Therefore, I am forced to rewrite the value of the Y coordinate to position the star shape even lower. You have to play with the values a bit to get the right size and position. If the size of the star has become too big, it is worth zooming out a little. You can do this by holding down the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel to change the preview window size. Unfortunately, if you grab it with the mouse, it repositioned the position of the star. As you can see, I can move it left, right, and up, but no matter how I try, it won't allow me to place the shape any lower. So you have to set the value of the Y coordinate and try until you find the right size and position. But if you know a better solution for this, write me in the comments below what I'm doing wrong, why I can't put it in place with the mouse. Once you have put the star in place, you need to convert it into a compound clip. Then again select the horizontal option on the mask tab and adjust the value and position of the feather. The values of 60 to 70% we used before will give us good results here as well. If you are not satisfied with the size of the light, you can increase or decrease its size with the scale property on the basic tab. Moreover, if you turn off the uniform scale, you can set its height and width separately, giving it a completely new appearance. It can be wider and lower, or just the opposite, higher and more narrower. It depends on what kind of shape you want. For example, with the ladder settings, if I rotate it a bit and place it on the edge, I can create this cool spotlight effect. If I double this light layer with Ctrl C and Ctrl V keys, then rotate it in the opposite direction and position it on the other edge, then I get a new, slightly theatrical effect. Creating a light effect manually. If you want more freedom and more control in the shape of the light source, then with this technique, you can customize the shape of the light source as you want. Let's delete the previous light layers and place a pure white layer again. But here is the trick. Drag a new black layer above the white layer. 
rotate it by 45 degrees, and position it so that it starts roughly from the center of the screen. Duplicate this black layer using Ctrl C and Ctrl V keys and change the rotation value to minus 45 degrees. Drag it to the other side of the screen so that the two black layers meet and form a triangle. You can adjust it a bit by increasing the rotation value from 45 to 50 and from minus 45 to minus 50. This makes the triangle fill the screen even more. Select both black layers and position them so that the white triangle is roughly in the middle of the screen. Once done, select all three layers, the two black and the one white layer, and transform them into a compound clip. It is worth converting this into a plain image as mentioned in my previous videos. Use the right click, edit, and freeze option to make an image out of the compound clip, so if necessary, it can be converted into a compound clip again later on. After this, we can repeat the already well-known steps from before. So, go to the Mask tab, select the Horizontal option, and adjust the value and position of the feather as shown earlier. If you want, go back to the Basic tab, and adjust the width and height of the light layer. Also, just to match the previous example, let's rotate the light at about 50 degrees, place it in the corner, and maybe adjust its size and position a little more. Then, double the layer, rotate it by minus 50 degrees, and place it in the other corner of the screen. Oops, I missed an important step. As you can see here, the black part of the layer is still visible and covers the image below it. All you have to do is to change the blend mode to screen. This way, it's much better we can put the light layer back to the corner, and of course, don't forget to set the blend mode to screen for the other layer as well. A little tweaking on the positions, and we're done. Light Effect Animation And to make this tutorial a bit more fun, here's a little bonus, just to show you how to use these light effects as animations, and not just dry images. Go to the beginning of the clip, and place a keyframe. Then, let's go a little further, about 10 to 15 frames, and place another keyframe. Change the value of the rotation from 50 to 70, and change the position so that the starting point of the light source is in the corner. Let's go forward another 10 to 15 frames, and repeat the previous steps, but now the rotation should only be around 30 degrees. And finally, place another keyframe one frame back from the end, and return to the starting point. If you did these steps with me, you should get something like this. Here's another little trick. Hold down the control key and select all the keyframes. Then, press control C, go back to the beginning of the clip, click on the top layer, and press control V, and voila, you've copied all the keyframes from the previous layer onto another layer. Of course, this step didn't make any sense here, since you have to click on each keyframe and rewrite the rotation and position values to the pattern of the previous layer, only with negative values. I just thought I'd show you that if there is such a thing and you forgot to put the keyframes on the layers, then you don't need to repeat all steps on each layer one by one, but you can copy and paste only the keyframe settings to another layer. After you have corrected all the keyframe values, you should get something like this as a final result. Of course, if you don't want to struggle so much with these light effects, you can use one of my pre-made light images I have made for you in advance. Simply import it into your project, change the blend mode to screen, rotate, position, and scale it and you're done. In the next video, we will use simple elements and I'll show you how to use and move them together without losing quality. These simple tricks are essential for you to understand if you want to create a high quality video in CapCut. That's all for me for this video, if you want more, check out my school course. You can download all the assets I've created for this video for free, link is in the description. And as always, like, subscribe, and leave a comment for this nice guy.